Oh, my Chinese dubbed VCD copy of TMNT. Why is there so much pain in the world? No matter how hard I try, I can't do anything to fix it. I want, I want to be a force of love, a force of good, but I'm just... I'm just so tired. What good am I if I can't help anyone? What good am I? What good am I? I'm just so... so tired. Mikey and I took an early lead in the race. Hello everyone and welcome back to Team and T. And a lot of things are going to happen in this level. A lot of new game mechanics are going to be introduced, most of them portain pertaining pertaining to the Team and T family. We can now play as all four characters and switch between them at will, kind of. You see that weird goofy meter in the top right? That's our trust meter, and it fills up slowly as we perform well in combat and in platforming, until one of our brothers trusts us completely. And when that happens, we can switch to him at will. Master Splinter will take a moment to try and explain it here, but I pretty much just explained it in its entirety. If you do good in platforming and combat, your brother will trust you more and eventually you can use him. It's a cute idea to show Leonardo regaining the trust of his brothers, but it doesn't really work well in the context of this mission, since Raphael and Leo are supposed to be racing toward the goal independently of Mikey and Donatello, not with them. So now that Mikey trusts us, as Master Splinter is saying, we can press square to switch to him at any time, and we can cycle between all four turtles eventually this way. There are a lot of reasons to switch between turtles, but the most important is the special family attacks. Each character has their own special family attack, and some are more useful than others, but Mikey's isn't too bad, and they recharge very quickly, as you just saw. Mikey's special family attack, as you're already seeing, is that he spins Leonardo around and can hit multiple enemies with him. Doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it practically makes you invincible, and it can hit multiple enemies with ease, unlike some of the other attacks. You can also juggle enemies easily with it if you get them into a corner or in a tight corridor. It's not the best of the family attacks, but it's not the worst either, and whenever you finish off an enemy with a family attack, they drop an extra coin. These extra coins are probably the most important reason to use the family attacks, because if you remember, there are a maximum amount of coins that appears at the end of the level in a tally, and using the family attacks you can get more than the maximum amount of coins. This is the easiest way to get an a rank in some of the later stages. So for example, there may only be 12 coins in a stage, but if you defeat 80 enemies using family attacks, then you'll have 80 extra coins. And that's more than enough to boost your score into an A-plus ranking regardless of anything else. And I don't really have any complaints about this idea because it does take some time and skill to use the family attacks to their maximum potential. It may seem easy right here, but there are actually quite a few risks to using family attacks, which I'll explain now. If your family attack misses, then you'll completely lose trust with that brother and he'll run away and you'll have to regain that trust back. There's also a bit of a charge up before a family attack can be used, and if you're hit during that charge up, that will damage your trust, although it won't destroy it completely, like if you miss. In my initial playthrough of this game, those two factors terrified me and uh, stopped me from using the family attacks entirely, which isn't the way to go. The way to go is just to get good at using the family attacks, not to ignore them. Using all of the family attacks effectively is immensely satisfying, especially Raphael's and Donatello's. In other words, having all four brothers in a stage together adds a lot more mechanical depth to the platforming and combat, and I appreciate it very much. It's also probably the best tie-in to the themes of the film, although it doesn't really fit well with the context of the story in most instances. Because even though Leonardo slowly gaining the trust of his brothers through his competence is a great idea, the idea of his brothers just running away is kind of moronic in stages where there are high stakes at play. Because in spite of the issues they had with each other in the film, they would never just leave each other for dead, as they do here. So that's terrible, and again, I really wish this, this game was not related to the film at all. I mean, they tried. I can't say they didn't try. They, they sure as hell tried, but it's just not good enough. 
So remember how I said there was a mechanic coming up that would get rid of wall running pretty much entirely? Here it is. This mechanic is a blessing. It will save me so much pain. If we press the square button mid-jump, we can use one of the brothers to throw another. And that makes all of, all of the hard jumps so much easier. But this long toss move, although it makes the platforming much easier, also comes with some risks. If you miss the long toss, then you will lose all the trust of the brother involved and he will leave. And if you hit your brother's head while long tossing him, your brother will also leave then too. The long toss is incredibly risky, basically, and is best used only in areas where you're absolutely certain you wouldn't be able to make a jump, unless you're just that confident yourself. It's a fun ability to have, and after you get good enough at it, it's like I said, a get out of wall running free card which is something I very much appreciate because the wall running is the biggest issue I have with the platforming. Which again is probably my own fault, but I appreciate the ability to circumvent yeah. it. So in general, a lot of good things introduced in this level. Took a while to get here, but this game has 16 levels in it, so they wanted to pace it out, I assume. Hey, By the way, if you're wondering why some of the cutscenes are missing, it's because they contain film footage. That's part of the reason, anyway. The other the other part of the reason is that I'm using any excuse I can not to show the cutscenes. I mean, I leave them in when I have to, but if I don't have to leave them in, it's no big loss, because... Boy, do I not like what this game does to TMNT's story. I like that film so much. You know, even though this is a really good game, maybe it wasn't a great choice to Let's Play it, because I'm having a great time. But also, just watch the movie, maybe. Maybe someone could do, like, a reskin of this game for me. The platforming in this game is so good, and the combat's even gotten better. You know, there's not a lot to complain about here. There are things to complain about. The game's not perfect, but it's enjoyable. Here's Donatello's family attack. Shocks everybody. Everybody in the arena. And while they're stunned, that either leaves them open to basic melee attacks or to other family attacks, most notice noticeably Raphael's, which uh, is something we're going to rely on heavily eventually. Eventually I'm going to start cutting out the combat segments unless they're incredibly noteworthy for one reason or another, like the introduction of a new enemy type, or some specific tactics that are required, or something unique in the environment. Because although the combat isn't exactly terrible by any means, especially with the addition of the family mechanics, it's just, you know, it's not entertaining to watch. It's kind of the inverse of Spider-Man Friend or Foe, where the combat is really fluid and fun to use, and there's a ton of variety in it because of all the unlockable characters. But the platforming in Spider-Man Friend or Foe is, is negligible. It's just boring. It's not bad, it's just boring. In this game, it's the other way around. Because in this game, it's the combat that's boring and negligible, and it's the platforming that's the good part. Maybe if they combine... Maybe if they combine friend or foe with TMNT... I mean, I'm sure that was never on the table, because Ubisoft and Next Level Games are very different developers, but... That's probably ideal. Probably ideal to combine the two. It's not that I'm disappointed that the Team and T game tried its own thing, but I think it's safe to say that its own thing could have been done better. Could you say that Spider-Man Friend or Foe tried its own thing? I'm not really sure that you could. This was all yours, dude. Friend or Foe is kind of like, oh hey look, one of the few places to use Don's platforming gimmick. Anyway, as I was saying, could you say Friend or Foe tried its own thing? It's like a Lego game where the beat em up combat is greatly enhanced, basically, is the best way I can think to describe it. It's time for my favorite family attack, Raphael's. Raphael's attack is a one-hit kill on anything it touches. It's difficult to aim because he's just throwing one of his brothers at the enemies, but you can also ricochet the shot off of walls, and it's a lot easier if the enemies are standing still, which we can accomplish via Donatello's shock attack. It's also the only projectile family move, which has a lot of benefits. And I guess we should so show Leo's, but 
Leo's is by far the worst. It's a really underwhelming area of effect attack that deals almost no damage. And I know why it's like that. It's because you have Leo before everyone else, but it's still really bad. There's almost no reason to use Leo's attack at all. Leo's family attack, I mean. I certainly hope this level in this video will help you appreciate the game more, because like I said, it's quite an enjoyable game. Probably we're supposed to wall run through that section, but screw that when I have the, the long throw. Long toss? We're gonna call it the long toss. This fan pushes back against us, but if we stay close to the wall, it's a lot easier to fight the wind resistance. It's a cute hazard. Not really special, but cute. People should really look into all this steam just kind of leaking out of their walls. Sadly, there aren't any great set pieces in this level, which is a little bit of a disappointment compared to some of the beautiful earlier levels and beautiful later levels, but I think the introduction of all the new game mechanics makes up for that in this case. You know, I just got the idea, like, that I'm basically reviewing each level, and that seemed kind of funny to me. It also reminded me of this really weird and terrible Maximo Let's Play that someone did where they would give a rating to each level based on its difficulty and uh, and its fun factor, and I just completely screwed that up. Okay, we're back, and as I was saying, uh, the idea of reviewing each level reminds me of this really bad Maximo Let's Play I saw one time where this guy would give special ratings to each level, and he was nowhere near good enough at the game to make that kind of call. He just wasn't. Like, yeah, giving the game, giving the game's levels a difficulty rating, that's not a bad idea, but you can do that through your commentary. And also, you're, you're really bad at the game. St don't be bad at it. I guess I shouldn't say don't be bad at it. Also, here's the hardest jump in the game. I use Mikey for it. The perspective on this jump is really messed up. So I use Mikey to make sure I land it. Anyway, as I was saying... I shouldn't say don't be bad at Maximo, it's perfectly okay to be bad at games, just don't be bad at something and then pretend you're an expert on it, is what I meant to say. A lot of people do that. Awful lot of people. I accidentally did that a couple of times, uh, most recently with Common Rider Bat Ride War, but I fixed my boo-boo. I, I, I fixed that right up. The most important thing is admitting your mistakes and learning from them, I think. Everybody makes mistakes. And you should also remember it's very possible to be good at something and the thing you're good at can still be bad, like Sonic 06. I can S-rank Sonic 06, that doesn't make it good. But because I can S-rank it, I think I have more right to talk about it than people who don't. That's not to say people who don't S-rank it can't talk about it, but I experienced the game to a more thorough degree. You know, maybe you guys should do something about this building that's on fire. We should fix it up somehow. Like, stop it from being on fire. It's kind of what you do, right, to save innocent people. I don't know, maybe this building is condemned, but it's also on fire. I guess it could be a little unreasonable to ask you to put the fire out. Maybe that's a little bit beyond your scope, but if you could just uh, make sure there are no innocent people in the building, I think that would also suffice if you could do that. Please ignore me feeling the wall jump. Let's pretend it's not happening because I forgot my own advice about holding the X button down. Also, no, my voice is not just randomly switching tones. I am shifting around on the bed as I'm doing commentary, and it turns out that greatly affects how my voice sounds, who would have guessed? Maybe if I do the commentary upside down, I will get an even differenter tone. You gotta collect them all. I really don't appreciate how right here the game recycles the falling window pane hazard without any new additions. It seems rather lazy to me. But we're near the very end of the level at this point, I suppose. Are you ready to watch me completely flub a jump again? Okay, so Raphael would have left there, but for some reason he didn't, and I'm not quite sure why. I'm really not sure why. Everybody makes mistakes. Just remember that while you watch me jump into the steam. Everybody, everybody makes mistakes. 
I'm not arrogant enough to call myself an expert on the TMNT video game, but I think I'm probably a lot better at it than most people, because I practiced it quite thoroughly before recording. You know, I'm gonna stay in one position on the bed from now on, but this was quite a fun experiment, wasn't it? Hearing my voice from different angles. I'm doing it upside down right now. How's this one? H how's this one? Whoa! Yeah! We win! They lost! 